qualified to do this because I'm not the world's best presenter. Um, but I think that might be a good point of view for you all. So probably most of the advice you've got on how to do public speaking has been from a speech professor or teacher in your high school who's done nothing but staying in front of a class every day for 30 years and they've forgotten how to be afraid of it. You guys haven't forgotten how to be afraid of it, I am sure. Um, I have not, so, um, so welcome. This is the whatever th presentation in the professional development series. Anybody new who hasn't been one of these lectures with me? One, two, all right. So you guys will have so much new to learn today. Everyone else's will be review. <coughs> so in this lecture today, uh, first content in the order of presentation. Uh, this will be one slide and probably less than a minute of discussion. And then all of the rest of our talk today is going to be exercises on how to be comfortable speaking in front of people because you're a bunch of antisocial engineers or so stereotype would say. So um, <laughs> design review presentation content, right? This is very important, but you guys know this already because I've been lecturing about it for a few weeks. What is the content of your design review? Somebody. You need to look up here. We've talked about it for three or four weeks now, right? What is it? Your design documentation, right? So what are the phases of design? What's the first phase of design? Right, right here. First phase, what's the first stage? Yep, I'm looking at you. Me? Ah. First stage of design. Not her, nope. <laughs> You should know, it's on, the, it's on the wall in all of the conference rooms for Epics, which you're a part of, yeah? <laughs> so, does somebody want to help her out? Pro project identification, right? Oh, okay. So what do, we, what do we talk about with that? Problem statements, yeah, right? Out what you need to do. Exactly, what do you need to do? Who, who are you doing it for? So that's your, who's your project partner? Who are the stakeholders, right? We talked about stakeholder analysis. Can any, does anybody know the second phase of the design process? Specification. specification development. Very good. So what have we talked about for specification development? User need development, right? So you know who all the stakeholders are. What do they want? What are, what are user needs? You. Those are great specifications. What are user needs? Is this something that the, the school needs to solve? Or if, if someone has a problem, the school needs to be able to uh, solve it for them? Yeah, so it's the primary features of the product. So in user needs, we talked about functional user needs, interfacial user needs, right, and all these things. Good. And then specifications are translating user needs into something that is what? Right here. Quantitative. There we go. Very good. So your, your content goes like this. Here's who my project partner is. Here's the problem they have. Here is all the stakeholders for that problem. Here are the specifications that we developed for the user needs. Here's our conceptual design. Here's our detailed design. Here are the schematics, prints, drawings, whatever you came up with for that design. And you're done, right? So that's your content. It's easy. So you just follow the design process. If you forget it, <coughs> go to the Epic's website and you go under we, we made the point of going to the website last week because you guys didn't know where it was. Where is it at? On the website. And what? Current students, right? Yeah. Go under current students, everything is there. Or you guys go into to our lab meeting every week. It's on the wall. There's a picture of it and there's a big table that's framed. Just look up there. There's your cheat sheet. It's right there where you'll get the question asked. So those are the very things you need to cover. And that is... Uh, that is all of the real content for the lecture today. So that's all you need to know. So when I come back and test you next time and I ask you what goes in a presentation, you just tell me the design process, right? It's right there. Bang. Okay. One more test. What is a minimum viable product? Anybody? Right. Right, it's the least thing that you can design and build that meets your user needs, right? Excellent. Okay, so uh, I'm going to jump into one more video and then we'll move the forward. Most, even more than dying, it's public speaking. Heart racing, panic, no place to lie. And we're seeing so many 
famous example is on tape tonight. ABC John Quinone has decided to see how to tame that fear. Ladies and gentlemen, director and producer Michael Bay. He's one of the most successful men in Hollywood, behind movies like Transformers. But last week in Las Vegas, producer-director Michael Bay was giving a speech when suddenly uh, he froze. And I'm sorry. We have to leave the stage. Let's thank Michael Bay for joining us. On his website, an embarrassed Bay said live shows just aren't his thing. Um. <laughs> He's hardly the only one. It's something Noah Gordon lives with every day. It's exhausting thinking about it. Noah works at a Chicago-based marketing firm, but he's deathly afraid of public speaking. He says this paralyzing phobia affects his entire life. Your brain shuts down, so you just have to stop. So why do we panic? Experts point to evolution. Long ago, when many eyes were on you, chances were you were prey about to be attacked. So today, when you're in front of one of these, a primal part of your brain thinks it's actually <laughs> one of these. We had to either flee or fight. Priscilla Chang, the public speaking expert who's consulted for ABC, explained, the sweating is so that the body can cool off quickly, the shallow breathing so that the oxygen can go to the muscles. And then the adrenaline kicks in, all to help us fight harder and flee further. None of that works for modern man when he's feeling frightened in a situation which is asking him to be cool, calm, collected, and connected. That's it! Noah found the task at the famed Second City Comedy School. They put people on stage and get them comfortable with the sound of their own voice. Some of their secrets? Number one, breathe deeply right before starting. That sends a signal to shut off the fear response. Number two, get right to it. The first 30 seconds are when you're most likely to panic. So ask a question. Get your audience involved. Is it in the club? <laughs> Noah says it's helping him face those cats back at the office as a lion himself. And here's John Kenyon right. at the Sundance Film Festival, by the way. How many people <coughs> think that they've had fear of public speaking, John? So many, Diane. Hollywood heavyweights, not only Michael Bay, but people like Kristen Stewart. And okay. So that is... Oh. They are petrified to Just get out of here. All right. Uh, shut this off. <coughs> okay. So um, the, two, the two women you saw from the Second City there that were given the class, I've been to their class twice. Uh, part of my past job, more or less the same thing. So what they do is they teach um, improv theater people in order to teach them how to be effective in public speaking. Now, improv theater and public speaking are a lot different, but you use a lot of the same skills. Also, uh, improv, um, has anybody been to an improv theater show? A couple of you have. So improv theater is, uh, there's no script. Um, usually they take cues from the audience on what their scene is going to be. And there's a couple of core, um, <coughs> sort of core tenets they talk about. If I, if I can breathe. Um, the first one is everything you do is right in improv, right? So if you're working with a partner, somebody speaking with you, you never say no. You always say yes and, okay? So when you're working with your teammates and in your design review and somebody says something, you don't say, no, that's not, that's not right. You just say yes and, then you can go on and, and go where it's at. So you can imagine how saying no would kill a scene in improv, right? So if, if I'm up here with one of you and someone in the audience says, you know, we're under the sea, and I say, we're under the sea, and I am a coral, and you say, no, you're not a coral, you're a fish. Well, that just killed the scene, right? Now people in the audience have no idea what's going on. So you have to just go with whatever they say. <coughs> we'll talk about that a little bit today. And the other one is learning not to judge yourself, okay? One of the big reasons why you get that scary feeling when you're up in front of people is you're focused on you. Right? You're focused on how are people perceiving me? What are they thinking about me? Do I look good up here? Am I going to get an A? You're, all, you're only thinking about yourself, and you're judging yourself before everyone else judges you. Right? But when you come to present, when you go in your design review, you need to come from a place of service to the people who are listening to you. Okay? And believe it or not, they're actually coming to give you the same. Because we're all here working toward our community partners, and if you have your community partner in your design review, you're there, to, you're there to do something for them, so present that way. They're not there to judge you, they're there to help you provide for their need. 
And if it's someone from industry or one of your faculty members, they're there to help your project do better. So they're there to serve you, okay? So if you come to it from a place of service, you'll be much less self-conscious because you're sitting there saying, I'm here to help teach you something. I'm here to help build something for you. And it's not about me, okay? It's not about how well I can do it. It's about providing you with that service. So those are two things that we want to work on. Um, so um, I want to I jump right in now, and we're going to flip. You guys are going to come down here, all of you. Try and form something like a circle or, or an oval. So everybody up, come down here. <coughs> you don't get to sit down the rest of the time. So just make yourselves at home up front. I apologize to everybody who's watching this on video because this is going to get a little weird. <laughs> um, so, so I apologize. I am not anywhere near the personality of the two women who you saw in the video from Second City. They are professional actors, and they bring this crazy energy. One, I don't have a partner, so no one to feed off of me. It's just me up here. Um, but um, a couple of things we're going to start doing. I want everybody to introduce yourselves. We'll start with you. Right? Oh, we'll start with me, and then we'll go this way, okay? And, and what I want is, I want you to say what your name is, and then say something about yourself. And everybody in the group is just going to meet whatever they say with just ridiculous applause, OK? <laughs> that, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm Andrew. I have two kids, Lucy and Eli. <laughs> My name is Kevin. I'm in the FX program. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I have 10 fingers. Yeah! Tom! Yeah. Ah. I'm Sujit and I'm in engineering. Yeah! yeah. I'm Steve and I like soccer. Yeah, Steve! Soccer, all right! I'm Shiv and I love cars. Yeah, Shiv! That was great. I'm a poor and I have a laptop. Yeah! yeah. Yeah, sandwiches are delicious. All right. I'm Anna, and I love snow skiing. Yeah, Anna. Woo! I'm Ayo, and I like biking. Yeah, riding bikes. A lot of transportation. I like it. Oh. I'm Jim, and I own 23 pairs of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> that might be unhealthy, but all right. I'm Sam, and I can juggle. Oh, yeah, yeah, juggling. Yeah. I'm Alex. I'm wearing size 13 shoes. Yeah, big shoes. Uh, my name is Ben, and I've been to Ireland. Yeah. My name is Aaron, and I missed my 8:30 this morning. Woo! Yeah. I'm Sati, and I'm an RA. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm Jessica and I graduate in May. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that seems crazy and silly, but the point is to give you that, that feeling that everything you do is right here today, okay? And that's the feeling that I want you to carry with you when you go into your design reviews, okay? So you're going up there, you're nervous, you feel like you didn't get something done in your project, you feel like you're being judged. Just go up there with that feeling like everything I say is going to be right. No one knows any better anyway. Okay, so that's one of the great things about presenting. It's like if you're a musician and you're playing a song and you screw up a note, probably nobody knows because it's your song. So you can just go with it, right? So that's one of the things to keep in mind. So the next thing we're going to do is, is a game called Zoom, okay? And the, the point of Zoom is to be all in the moment, okay? So this will help you when you're, at, when you're in your design review and you're taking questions from your reviewers and they ask you something off the wall, it's going to help you be on right away so you can think through and answer that question. So Zoom is an extremely simple game, and we're just going to add one piece of complexity as we go. So we'll start with Florida over here. And, and basically with Zoom, all you do is just go Zoom like this. And once he Zooms to his right, 
the next person zooms, and you just keep zooming all the way around the circle. All right? Zoom. Okay. Zoom. Zoom. All right, very good. Okay, okay. Now we're going to add in. Now we're going to add in our first uh, change here. So we're going to add in reverse. Okay. So when it gets to you, you can either zoom or you can reverse. Okay. So to reverse, stand two hands up, reverse, and it's going to go back the other way. Okay. And the big thing on zoom is you just want to bring the same energy as the person before you. So keep the energy up high. So let's start with Purdue shirt over here. Zoom it. Okay, now we're gonna. All right, now we're gonna add in the next the next uh, piece of complexity here, which is skip. Okay, so if if Jessica zooms to me this way, I'm gonna skip over the top. Okay, and it's gonna go to Purdue shirt. All right. <laughs> sorry, I did not remember all your names when we did that. I'm sorry. Uh, so everybody get the concept of skip. So it doesn't change direction, but skip somebody. All right. <clears throat> and zoom. <laughs> okay, now we're going to add in one more. <laughs> we're going to add in one more piece. <clears throat> okay, so now next piece we're going to add in. Um, I'm going to go with you. Make up something we're going to do next. Oh, gracious. Um, you can uh, zoom it to somebody across the circle. Right? Okay, so we're going to go with a pass. Yes. Okay, and what is the sound and gesture you make for a pass? I just pass. Yeah, just like pass. Okay, so we're going to do a jump shot that is a pass. <laughs> yeah. This is an alley-oop, I guess. So we're going to ju jump shot like across. Pass <laughs> so, okay. so, all right, you've got Dwight Howard on the other side. We're going to do an alley-oop. <laughs> Okay, so zoom. Zoom. Pass. Zoom. 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 Yep. Zoom. 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 Skip. Oh, zoom. 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 Okay, do you guys get how, how as it comes to you, you have a preconceived notion of what you're going to do, right? You think you know, and you're like, I'm, I'm going to pass. This is going to be <laughs> awesome. And then it reverses right before it gets to you. Or, or you're planning on doing a, a reverse and they skip you. So you're already doing this. And you're like, well, I, I wanted the ball, right? Do you all see how you do that? So that's just that be, being in the moment. Pay attention to what's going on around you. I've seen, we all do it, right? You're in a group presentation and you've talked about your slides and somebody else in your group is talking and you're just like, <laughs> so be in, be in the moment and be with them because they're going to get questions at the end pertaining to what they're talking about. You want to be there with them, okay, support them. Everybody feels that pull together when you're presenting as a group and everybody's there together engaged. But when your team is disengaged and you're alone, you feel like you're on an island. That makes it that much scarier, right? So be together, be as a team. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so let's move on to our next exercise. I know we've got a ton of these and I'm trying to put them in. Um, so the, the next one is physical preparedness. So a few, a few things to think about. When you come into a meeting, okay, you, it, it sounds weird to think about a physical thing when you're going to present because you just stand here right this way. Right? It's not about working out, but you sit in your chair and you sit really still, and then you've got to get up and talk, and you want to be really prepared, and you're all jittery because you haven't moved in like an hour, right? <laughs> so so don't, don't be all jittery like that. The way to do it is just to get that get that physical exercise out, right? Not exercise, but get, the, get all the jitters out. So go outside of the conference room before your talk and just move, like pace, move, get all those wiggles out before you get in. And that way, when you get into your meeting, you can find your center and be confident, okay? Um, so the next one we're gonna talk about is how to relax before you go in, before you start. 
and I, I, this sounds weird, I promise, since learning it, I do it today. Before I walk into this room, every time I do it, before I have to give any kind of a speech, I always do this activity, okay? It's called breathing a square. Is anybody familiar with this? So a couple people, are, <laughs> you heard it today, okay? <clears throat> so breathing a square uh, is, a is a very simple thing, but when they talked about that fight or flight response in the video, right? So you, you think you're being pursued somewhere in the deep part of your brain. You all know that you're not. Um, but you get shallow, shallow breathing. Your heart starts beating fast. You start sweating, okay? You need to break that cycle somehow, or all of that uh, sympathetic nervous system in your body just gets kicking into full gear, and that's why you get so crazy. So one way to break out of that cycle is something called breathing a square. It forces your breathing to regulate, which will force your heartbeat back down, and it really helps you to calm down, okay? So I know a global vice president of Biomet, the company I worked at before, told me he does this before he walks into a meeting since we learned this. So this isn't a, an amateur move. This is something that the best presenters do, okay? So breathing a square is very simple. We'll do it twice. First time I'll show you, you just breathe in for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then hold it for four seconds. The weirdest part is that thing where you're holding your breath out for four seconds because you really just want to breathe back in. Your natural inclination is to want to breathe a triangle. You want to breathe it right back in, but leave it out, okay? So you're going to go in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, okay? Everybody together, breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Okay, does anybody feel like that kind of calmed you out, regulated your breathing a little bit, made you relax, okay? When you have a lot of anxiety and nervousness going, it really makes a big difference, okay? So it's a simple tool, but you should use it. Uh, a couple more things on posture when you're presenting. So I don't want you to overthink posture when you're presenting, but it is important. A couple of things to keep in mind. There, you have a reset button called your confidence spine, okay? So the, the posture you should have when you're presenting is arms at your side, head up, chest out just a little bit, okay? You're a proud person, you're up there, you're confident, okay? Now, I know coming from me, this is funny, I know like the second lecture I was using chalk, and I, I watched a little bit of my, the video of myself, and I'm doing this with the chalk the whole time. I'm just like, I have this piece of chalk. Do you guys like this piece of chalk, <laughs> right? So, so don't do that. If you have something in your hands, it'll drive you crazy. If you find you have really jittery hands, get a bottle of water, or something like that. Now your hands are grounded in this one thing, okay? And that'll keep you from doing all this. So it's best if you can go up there and hands to your sides, but if you really find that you have jittery hands when you talk, like, I mean, body language is good, but you don't want to be like, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen Talladega Nights. He's like, I'm not sure what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, so don't do that. Um, but confidence spine, basically, you imagine there's a string tied to the top of your head, okay? And you just are going to pull that string up. And when you do that, pull your head up, your chin is going to come up, and your chest out just a little bit and then put your arms back at your side. And that is your reset button. So when you're in the middle of a talk and you're like, I'm talking really fast and I'm really jittery and I need to calm down, just stop, pull that string on your head up. Don't use your arm, but just <laughs> imagine you're doing it. Pull that string on your head up and, and just let your arms come to your side naturally. It, you, nobody knows what to do with their arms right here. It feels weird, it looks really normal, okay? <laughs> so, so you're sitting there in your presentation, you start to feel nervous, just stop. Pause just a millisecond, pull your head up, regain your composure, okay? So anytime you're standing there, you're like, I don't know what to do with myself. I feel like I'm being weird or I feel like, you know, I'm being too jittery or I'm nervous. Just pull yourself up, confidence spine, and you're right there, okay? Give yourself some backbone, literally, all right? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, one more thing on that, um, moving during your presentation. So you guys will be up there as a group. It makes it a little bit hard to move. But it, it is natural and it helps to be engaging if you maybe take a step or two forward. When you're talking, you can take a step or two to the side and then you can come back to where you started, okay? But what you don't want to do is like be up here moving around and you don't want to be like, like super dead. So if you feel like you've got a little too much energy left, even though you got your energy out before you start, just take a couple of paces, confident spine in your back, okay? So these are just ways to kind of Everybody has that thing in the back of their head that's like, I'm doing something wrong. I don't know if I'm doing this right. So these are ways you can just bring yourself back, center yourself, um, and get yourself back into a good spot. So, so next thing we're going to do, um, 
<coughs> some of the best presenters, when they talk to like a big arena of people, they make a really great eye contact. You'll feel like they're looking at you, right? Even though they've got 10,000 people. And they say the way they do this is to do 10,000 individual conversations. And that makes you feel a lot more comfortable too. You're not looking out at a sea of eyes. You're making eye contact with one person. And you're just going to hold that one person's conversation just for a few seconds. So they feel that you're engaging them and you feel like you're talking to one person, which is really natural compared to talking to a whole crowd of people. Okay. So the activity we're going to do now, I just want everybody to just walk in space, just move back and forth across the room, make eye contact with a random person who you're coming against, and hold it until it starts to feel weird, okay? <laughs> and, and, and then break eye contact, and then the next person you engage with, try and hold it just a little bit longer, okay? So it, <laughs> you, you hit what's called an intimacy barrier, and everyone's is a little different length where you're staring at someone's eyes a little bit too long and it starts to feel weird and you need to look away, okay? So what you, what you want to do as a speaker is just try and gaze on, that, on, people, on someone's eyes just a little bit longer each time so you feel more natural doing it. So then when you're up presenting, there are going to be 15, 20 people in the room with you when you're presenting, that you're presenting to. And just make eye contact with each one of them for 30 seconds or a minute, okay? Just a short period of time, engage them, bring them into the conversation, and then they'll feel like you presented to them, okay? And it really it settles you down a little bit, too, because you're just talking to some one person. Okay? So disperse. So keep moving. Don't stop. Just keep walking. Make eye contact as you go. <laughs> it's supposed to be uncomfortable. <laughs> Not uncomfortable. We're stuck. We're stuck. We're stuck. Keep, keep walking. Keep moving. Okay, so as you, as you come into eye contact with the next person, think about coming from a place of service. Help the other person to hold eye contact with you, right? So bring a, bring a friendly composure. Show that person that you want them to be able to succeed, okay? So keep walking about. It feels weird now. It'll make it feel less weird when you present. All right, does everybody feel sufficiently weird now? Perfect. Okay, break up into teams of four. Four-ish, round four. Teams of four. Who's got a team of four? All right, here's a team of four. Everybody else go sit down. <laughs> don't get too comfortable. You don't get to sit down for long. All right, you guys tell me your names again real quick. I'm Sam. Sam. Anna. Ben. Ben. Tom. Tom? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. You guys are going to give a speech as a team. You have somewhere less than one minute apiece, okay? Um, so what you're going to give a speech about you are going to tell us. The average wingspan of a human. You're going to give, us, you're going to give a, a speech <laughs> about the wing, wingspan of a human. You are all experts in human wingspan, OK? So I want you to start. And I will tell you when to switch, OK? You're going to be somewhere a little bit less than a minute. Um, and then uh, you're going to pick up where he left off on the last word he used. Great. Perfect, <laughs> OK. And. Begin. Okay, so I had Anna here draw a line from this finger to this finger to be able to get the duration of my wingspan. <laughs> so as you can see here, I think people's arms are very long. When you add them together, it's always 
pretty long to me. <laughs> and I've, I've heard <laughs> that your wingspan is equivalent to your height. So I'm sure if I could lay down this chocolate right now, it'd be exactly from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. So most people think when they think of wingspan, they think of birds. Obviously, humans can't fly. So <laughs> that really helps out too much. And switch. <laughs> but um, even though humans can't fly, the thing is, we still have a wingspan. I mean, you can flap your arms, you can do whatever you gotta do. We have a wingspan. And just like he was talking about, it's proportional to your height. If it wasn't proportional to your height and it was like longer, then your arms would like go all the way down your ankles, and if it was shorter, you'd be like this. And you like that's why it, it just works out that way. And um, to add on to that, we were talking about the birds. So do you think that birds' wingspans are proportional to their length of their body? Because I don't think so. I think that their bodies are probably a little bit shorter than their wingspans because if they're able to fly, they probably have to have like really, really long wings. Like think about an eagle. Switch. So with eagles, <laughs> I bet when they're talking to each other, they don't say how tall are you. They probably say how big is your wingspan. That's probably more convenient for them because normally birds are flying and not standing next to each other. So if I was a bird, I'd probably compare my wingspan instead of my height which goes back to human wingspan because it's different in terms of humans comparing their heights. And not their Switch. Height. All right, so humans are much different than birds. As we've seen, because humans communicate through height and birds don't communicate uh, compare to each other with their wingspans. Um, the difference is humans have proportional wingspans to their height and birds have much larger wingspans in general to their height. Uh, so those are a few of the main differences in bird. Uh, <laughs> Man, give my hand. Very good. Nicely done. All right. Take a take a bow. Take a bow. All right. Next team of four. Go. And their speech is going to be about basketball. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we, we've established my knowledge of basketball. <laughs> this is an amazing pass. Uh, give me your names again real quick. Anna. Anna. Go ahead. Veronica. Veronica. That's a big name. Jessica. T-A-T-I, gotcha. <laughs> and go. So, the sport of basketball is a sport that many people will play in their lives. Um, there's a ball and there's a basket. So, I know that basketball was established by some PE teacher back in history. He needed a, a, a game for his PE class to play. So, he came up with this himself and he had peach baskets, I think, that he, or apple baskets, or some fruit baskets that he hung up on the wall. And they had to throw a ball into the basket. And from there, the game of basketball has developed. So I'm going to uh, express to you some of the rules of basketball as I currently know them. Last one I played was in fifth grade. Switch. So Grades are given to <laughs> basketball students in their PE class. <laughs> so when people need to get in shape, they use basketball as a good sport because they have fun playing it. Some people do. <laughs> and sometimes the switch teams, sometimes the teams do warm ups um, that's kind of to build teamwork and kind of accelerate your skills in basketball so some things they do are sprint across the basketball court they do um, practice shots from either the three point line or just layups you know running up to the basket um, sometimes they do stretches as a team sometimes it's individual but it's kind of as a team, they improve their overall work ethic, so when they're on the court, they can actually work as a team and have that cohesiveness. Switch. Um, and with the cohesiveness, um, really depends, like, if they're a good team all together or not. Um, we have Indiana Pacers. We have Chicago Bulls, <coughs> which are the best. <coughs> Thank you, Chicago. <laughs> Had to say that. Um, Florida, we have... <sighs> <laughs> Anyways, so, so being a cohesive team, um, it's really important. People can't be hogging the ball or flopping. Just these skills are appreciated in basketball, but you know,
know, once they work together, pass the ball, they can actually get consecutive wins and should be the finalists. Hey! <laughs> Nicely done. Next team four. Next team four. Next team of some number. <laughs> so there we go. Sujet? Sujet? Shiv, I know. Aaron. Alex. All right, these fine gentlemen are going to give us a speech about um, there. Nope. To you. <laughs> They're doing a speech about the various uses of mustard. Oh, right. and <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep this uh, PG-13. Please. <laughs> it, it, only because it's recorded, otherwise I wouldn't care. Go ahead. <laughs> usually get them in bottles and usually squeeze them out and then these days they got like different colors and different, uh, different patterns and stuff that comes out and uh, what else there's like mayonnaise and other stuff that's related to mustard uh, that you can put on sandwiches hot dogs or what burgers or whatever you eat them with uh, switch um, well hot dogs are all time favorites of mustard uh, mustard and hot dogs are really like each other <laughs> With mustard, you can add ketchup. They're opposite. They're different colors. Mustard is generally yellow, and then you have spicy brown mustard, which is not really brown. It's really yellow. <laughs> <laughs> then you have uh, mayo and mustard mixed together, and it's still yellow. <laughs> yeah, so you just mix it around, and it tastes really good. It tastes kind of tangy, tangy. Um, and it's like it's very sour, not sweet. I've never tried sweet mustard. I don't Skip. Know so who is hungry here after all that? Hey, sweet mustard. Hungry sweet that? mustard. Sweet Gotta mustard. pick up where he left off. Uh, sweet mustard <laughs> made me hungry after all that talk you guys were talking about. But we're going to talk about California. Um, there's a drought going on. They don't have much water. So <laughs> slipping, slip and sliding, it just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> there's no water in California. So what? Get the mustard out of the water. Get hungry. Right. So they actually switched to using mustard as their slip and slide. They rub it all over the slip and slide, and they just slide down it, and it makes sense. Um, when you get to the end, you know, usually it all collects, and they can slide into the mustard. You're going to get a great meal. Um, also, <laughs> save water. This drought is really crazy in California. Skip. Yeah, the crazy drought in California. <laughs> put in quite the uh, find in the manufacturers in California. They actually had to ship it in from the East Coast because uh, they have plenty of water over there. But speaking of more abstract uses of mustard, you can also use it as a substitute for WD-40 if you need a hard or a sweet <laughs> and throw some mustard. <laughs> hopefully, you, hopefully you have a yellow car. <laughs> um, other things you can do it, you can uh, write stuff on uh, paper. It's kind of like glitter glue, not really. Um, but yeah, mustard overall is a great product. You can use it in many different resources and ways, and you can eat it, you can Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty aesthetically pleasing, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, way to go, guys. Very nicely done. Who's up?
Does anybody have anything really hard for this group? That would be fantastic. I think they deserve it. These fine gentlemen will be discussing uh, the finer points of why girls wear nail polish. <laughs> 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 and go. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on one minute. I need names. Sorry. Now, now that you got time to think about it, we might have to change it. What do you got? Uh, Steve. Steve. <coughs> Jim. Jim. Brandon. Brandon. Trey. Trey. <laughs> EY? Well, gentlemen, commence with the nail polish. All right. Why do girls wear nail polish? It's a question that's asked many times. As an expert in this subject myself, I've reviewed it constantly. And the, <laughs> the main reason is because who doesn't like to look good? Uh, girls wear nail polish to look good. They always uh, wear it to match their different outfits or whatever, whatever they're wearing. Um, <laughs> You're an expert in nail polish. Oh. <laughs> it comes in lots of different colors, so pretty much with anything you wear, uh, you can pretty much go to whatever you want. Uh, we've made it for every single style, type, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so pretty much everybody can get whatever they want when they wear it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah is going to be a really tough one for your partner to follow up on. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Skip. Why do you have nail polish? Because boys can. It goes back to when we're at a young age. And these girls can do like things like painting nails and painting toenails, but guys can't. It's frowned upon. How many guys in here have worn nail polish before? Okay. I'm trying to my foot here. Birds must admit it. <laughs> unique taste in that they can match their nails to whatever clothes they're wearing. You guys can't do that either. Um, it's also that's why it's also frowned upon for guys to wear pink because pink is colored by nails usually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about 45 seconds. Go ahead. Talk about the drought. Yeah. The reason for the drought is nail polish. Skip. Skip. Nail polish. Nail polish drought. <laughs> Very good. Nicely done. All right. <laughs> Guys, hold, now wait a, wait a second, audience. What is the first rule of improv? Wait, don't insult the audience. First rule of improv is everything you do is right. So you, no matter what happens in an improv situation, you can't be offended. 
So how does the audience react, right, if you're offended at <laughs> what they say? So, so everything you do is right. Just go with it. So, I mean, if you're in your design review presentation, you're presenting as a team, and someone on your team says something you completely disagree with, does it make for a better presentation and a more valuable design review if you say, what? That's not right. No. <laughs> right? That, that, but you can correct. So you say, yes, and also you've uh, overlooked this issue. <laughs> 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 Yes, and also that was a very limited worldview you just expressed. <laughs> okay, uh, was that everybody? Is any? Do we, we've got a team left that hasn't gone. Uh, you're sitting right beside me. You surely don't think I'm going to miss you. All right, who has? It's time out. No, it is not. It is 5:18. There's two, two people, two minutes. Let's go. I think one minute get there. You're wasting time. Get up here. I'm going to hold you all over. Get up here. <laughs> all right. These two gentlemen are. You haven't gone either, have you? You're trying to hide on me. Get up here. Uh, you guys are going to be on a tight time schedule here, so these are going to be brief ones, unless everybody wants me to drag it out for two minutes to shame these. <laughs> okay, so you guys have got seven minutes apiece, just for the purpose of shaming you. Uh, Sujit, what are they going to be talking about? Elbows. Elbows. You're going to be presenting on elbows. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, all right, proceed. Yep. <laughs> Elbows uh, are present on humans' arms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the front legs of different other animals with, uh, uh, four, which have four legs. Uh, elbows also are not present on elephants. <laughs> and skip. Um, elephants. elephants. <laughs> Starting with elephants. <laughs> Very good, yes they are. Very good. Great job, everybody. Thank you so much. Okay, I tried to take individual notes, but on 45 seconds of speech, whatever we ended up with in time there, I couldn't write that fast. So uh, I'll give you group feedback, okay? Most of you showed a lot of the same thing. Some of you guys, uh, all of you guys did a fantastic job, okay? Uh, so. <laughs> So most of you had great smiles while you talked. That's <laughs> wonderful, super engaging to your crowd. Most of you were making eye contact as you talked. That was really good. So bring those good smiles when you go to your design review. Don't be like, oh, I'm an engineer, so I'm very serious. It's OK to be fun and talk, OK? People will like that. They'll listen to you more, and they'll be more inclined to help you if you do that. So that was great. Uh, the bad things I saw was a lot of this. Okay, A lot of you guys like to hide your arms because you have weird hands and you don't want people to see them. So don't do this. Okay. Don't put them in your pockets. Your hands are normal. We all have hands. I know they're kind of weird, but um, good news is we have elbows. We don't have front legs. So, so those hands of yours, you can put right here, okay? Just keep them right here. If you ever wonder, like, are my hands in the right place? Just, like, let them be limp and fall, okay? You can walk around like this, like you have limp arms and they don't work right. That's fine, but just try and avoid, because, like, this kind of stuff, you look like you're Napoleon and you're mad and you're like, <laughs> okay, so avoid that. Um, and that was really good. And then the other thing I saw a lot was like the lean. So a lot of you guys like to be like, I'm not sure where my center of gravity is. <laughs> I'm going to do this, dance a little jig. So again, confident spine, two feet on the floor, sort of shoulder width apart, your arms right here, stand up and just talk, okay? And you're just looking at one person at a time as you talk around the room, right? So hand gestures were generally really good. That wasn't too crazy um, for the people who didn't hide their hands. So that's good. that's good. Use your hands and talk. Oh, we made this thing this big, right? Hands are good, but just keep them from being too like wild and crazy. So good job. Does anybody have any questions? Is anybody going to breathe a square before they go to their design review? All of you are going to breathe a square before you go to your design review. Yes, very good. All right.